before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos just like this. Thanks. My time in upstate New York is done, and now I'm in Vermont. I kickstart my morning with a steaming cup of fresh apple cider from the Cold Hollow Cider Mill. There's no better way to begin a day in Vermont. I'm now driving up this scenic old farm road, making my way to a famous covered bridge, where legend has it that it's haunted. There are stories from a long time ago of a jilted lover conducting eerie rituals way back when. We you know how those tales go. Nothing spooky that I can see, but then again, most ghosts tend to like me. It sure is beautiful. Now it's time to head to Stowe, Vermont. I'm so excited. This is one of the parts of the trip I've been looking forward to the most. I arrive early and the town is peaceful and quiet. It's just as beautiful as I imagined. My plan for the day is to take a short hike starting near the chapel. I will walk through the woods, enjoying the peace you can only find in a forest. And then I'll head back down and take some time to explore the town itself. This forest is quite beautiful and very peaceful. And also, I'm just now realizing that I was so excited to be here that I forgot to change into my hiking shoes. Oops. The sound of rustling leaves underfoot is like a symphony playing just for me. There's a comforting chill on the air and the familiar aroma of a forest preparing for its dormancy. As I near the end of my hike, I stop and enjoy the final view of Stowe before leaving the forest and entering the town. I'm so excited to go explore Stowe. There's enough negativity in the world. I don't want to contribute to it, but I do want to be honest about my experience. When I left that forest and walked into Stowe, it was a completely different place than the place I had saw three hours earlier. There were hundreds of people crammed into one tiny little area right in front of the chapel, walking out into the street, taking selfies, clogging the sidewalks. Uh, it was so loud. There were people honking. There were people yelling. I remember a farmer was so upset because somebody had walked like out right in front of him to take a selfie with them in the chapel in the background. He was just trying to drive his load of hay through town and it probably took him an hour to go a route that probably normally takes him three minutes. It took him an hour. That traffic was insane. It really left me with a sick feeling of like my contribution to all of that. I just feel like we as travelers can do better. I guess um, we need to be more aware of, of our impact on the areas we visit. I love beautiful things. I love filming beautiful things and showing people beautiful things, but not at the expense of the beautiful thing. And I feel like being there in that moment 
uh, I was contributing to the opposite of a beautiful thing. Um, and real quick, I don't want to shame anybody who was there. It was I was there too. Uh, I just feel like collectively as a group we need to do better. And I also want to say the people I met in Stowe that were from Stowe were beautiful, were awesome, were uh, very patient and kind people. Stowe is beautiful. I just left feeling really conflicted on my role and responsibility. So, I don't know. I just wanted to tell you about my experience. Um, I still hung out in Stowe and once, as you'll see, once I got out of the, the main crowd, I had a great time. But all the videos I saw of Stowe were not what I experienced in Stowe and I just want to be honest about it. Anyway, enough of my talking head. Uh, back into Stowe. Getting away from Main Street made a huge difference. I enjoyed walking along the river and found some really beautiful little viewpoints. My favorite spot was probably this path along the river. It was so much less crowded and the views were great. It wasn't the trip I planned in Stowe, but it was still amazing. After walking along the river and back, I left town to go check out a popular barn, and the clouds opened up just enough to put a glow in the air. It was so beautiful. I enjoyed the view as quickly as possible as this was also a popular spot and I didn't want to clog the road. I drove back through Stowe to get on the road and started heading to my next camping spot. Tomorrow is going to be a busy day. I wake up early and drive to Northeast New Hampshire to hike the Table Rock Trail. This trail is a straight up hike that leads to a tall, narrow cliff overlooking Dixville Notch. I'm running a little late this morning, so I need to rush up as quickly as possible to catch the last half of Golden Hour. So I guess for me, it's just gonna be a golden half hour. Oh, and also in my rush state, I forgot to switch into my hiking shoes again. Neat. There's a slight chill in the air. And life is good.
It's honestly hard to leave such a beautiful spot, but this is a small and narrow cliff, and more than a few people are waiting their turn to enjoy the views. So I'm going to start heading back down, taking a bit more time to enjoy the scenery now that I'm not in such a rush. It's a beautiful day in New Hampshire, and this drive is beautiful the whole way. But as I started getting closer to my next planned hike, hundreds, yes I mean hundreds of cars were parked along the highway. Not a good sign for my next hike at Nope. There's a line of people going up the mountain, very similar to those photos you see of people in line at Everest. No thanks. I talked to some rangers and got some advice on when to return, so for now I'm going to head to my cabin, which will be my home base for the next few days, and unload my stuff. Then from there, it's on over to the world famous Kankamegas Highway. Now that that's done, it's time to hit the Kinkamegas Highway. Mm, it's me again. When I did my initial research for this trip, there were a couple mentions of minor traffic jams. My experience was that the second I left Lincoln and got onto the Kankamagus Highway, I don't know if I said that right, Kankamagus, Kankamagus Highway, the Kank. Once I got onto the Kank, maybe three miles in, four miles in, I started seeing people pulling off to this side of the road where there were clear signs saying not to do that. Do not park on the side of the road, only park in parking lots. I'm not exaggerating when I say probably 40 or 50 vehicles were pulling over and just parking wherever they wanted to. Um, I saw people flying drones, literally. I saw a person flying a drone standing right next to a sign that said do not fly drones in this area. I saw a group of people that had a like changing closet, like a big curtain um, where they could change outfits, I, I'm assuming, and um, film different costumes. In the, the end of scenery. I don't know why they were changing costumes. I don't know. It was maybe 10 miles into the drive that I hit the traffic jam and then spent the next four hours going about two miles an hour. <sighs> Light traffic. Again, I felt guilt for being a part of the problem. So I decided to just turn around and go back to my cabin and sleep it off. So that's what I did. It only took me two hours to get back, so I was thankful for that, that it didn't take another four. Yeah, again, just want to be open and honest about my experience, not trying to be negative. Yeah. Well, not knowing what else to do, 
I wake up early and hit the trails. There's a few spots I really wanted to see, so I'm trying to knock them all off before the crowds get in. My dream trip, filled with promises of adventure and excitement, is slowly morphing into a bewildering nightmare. Everywhere I turn, I'm met with throngs of people, and the ceaseless crowds are beginning to suffocate me. It's becoming increasingly evident that something must change in order for me to salvage this trip and to rediscover the joy and wonder I had initially sought. My wonderlust is definitely waning. I gotta do something different. <laughs> 